Welcome to iClicker. In this video, we'll provide a complete overview of iClicker Cloud with all the information you'll need to use iClicker Cloud successfully in your classroom. This is similar to what you would experience if you attended a live training via the iClicker website. If you'd like to attend a live training, all you need to do is visit iClicker.com and click the Demos and Trainings button at the bottom of the screen. Here's an overview of what this video will cover. We'll start with a quick iClicker overview. We'll dig deeper into the requirements for instructors and for students. And we'll quickly discuss iClicker student app pricing. Then the bulk of this video will focus on how instructors use iClicker Cloud before, during, and after class to run polling, assignments, attendance, and quizzing activities. We'll discuss grading and learning management system options. Lastly, we'll review the support options we provide for instructors and students. Let's get started. What makes iClicker so powerful is its simplicity and ease of use. There are three easy steps to get started. First, with iClicker, there's no need to enter questions and answers into a separate system. Instead, iClicker floats on top of whatever content or presentation tools you're already using. Next, before using iClicker Live with your students, we recommend running practice activities with yourself and maybe a colleague or two. You can use your iClicker Cloud instructor email and password to log in for free to the student app and respond to your own questions. You're welcome to follow along with this video at your own pace or with the checklists available at iClicker.com forward slash support. Finally, invite students to join your iClicker course. Students can participate using the iClicker student app on their mobile devices, laptops, or tablets. They can also use the traditional physical iClicker remotes. You have the flexibility to choose what will work best for you, your classroom, and your students. Whatever you choose, be sure to let your students know that they'll need to create accounts and join your course in the iClicker student app. Here's what you'll need as an instructor to run iClicker Cloud in your class iClicker Cloud requires the iClicker Cloud desktop software, an instructor account, and we recommend having whatever computer you're using to run iClicker Cloud hardwired to the internet. This is recommended but not required. If you're hardwired to the campus internet, a blip in the campus Wi-Fi won't knock you out of a session, and you'll lessen the load, however slightly, on your classroom's Wi-Fi. You have the option to use the iClicker Cloud mobile app on your mobile device or tablet, to control polling questions and your presentation. This allows you to walk around your classroom while you teach, rather than being tethered to the podium. If you decide to allow students to use iClicker remotes to participate in your sessions, you'll need the iClicker base hooked up to the computer you're using to run iClicker Cloud. You'll also have the option to use an iClicker instructor remote to control your presentation. Here's what your students will need to participate with iClicker. Be sure to communicate early to your students what devices you'll allow in class and what they need to do to be ready to participate. Students will need an iClicker student app account. All new student accounts include 14 days of free access. After that period, students must purchase a subscription or enter an access code unless your institution has a site license. Students will need a participation device. That can be a smartphone, laptop, or tablet with the iClicker student mobile app or the iClicker student website. These options require robust classroom Wi-Fi to support quick and reliable iClicker sessions. Students can also use iClicker remotes if you allow them. Students must still create an iClicker student app account and enter the iClicker remotes ID into their account. A subscription or access code is not required for students participating with physical remotes iClicker remotes also work without Wi-Fi as long as the iClicker instructor base is plugged in. iClicker is always free for instructors and institutions. For students, there are several affordable ways they can access iClicker. They can purchase a subscription directly through the student mobile or web app. Some instructors bundle iClicker access with another Macmillan Learning product. And in some cases, iClicker is included for students at no extra cost iClicker is included with most Achieve courses, College Success, and Developmental English Texts. Five years of subscription time is included with the purchase of any new iClicker remote. And finally, 
Some departments or institutions purchase a site license to cover the cost of iClicker for their students. Be sure to let your students know how they can access iClicker for your course. All student accounts include attendance, polling, quizzing, assignments, and study tools. And one student account can be used in multiple classes in the same term for the same price. Now that you know the basics of iClicker Cloud, I'm going to walk you through all the steps you'll need to follow to get up and running with iClicker in your classroom. You can pause the video as I go through each step and follow the steps in another tab in your browser. You should be ready to test out the iClicker Cloud software by the end of the video. To use iClicker Cloud, first you'll need to set up a free instructor account. Start the account setup process at iClicker.com. Click Create an Account, then click Instructor. Begin by searching for and selecting your institution. Then complete this form. The last field, Instructor Remote, is optional. When you've completed the form, agree to the privacy policy and click Create Account. Now that you have an instructor account, it's time to create your first course. When you log into iClicker Cloud for the first time, you won't have any courses. You can either click this Create a New Course link here, or you can click the Create New Course button in the upper left corner. Now you'll select which activities you'll be using in your iClicker Cloud course. Most instructors use the default option, which is to run polls, quizzes, and attendance. Attendance-only courses do not require the iClicker Cloud desktop software and can be run entirely from the iClicker Cloud instructor website. Next, make sure to fill in your institution, your course discipline, and your course name. Enter the start date and the end date. When your course ends based on the end date, it is automatically archived. An archived course no longer appears in student searches and cannot be joined. However, students who have already added the course will continue to have access to the content as long as they do not remove themselves from the course. We recommend filling in this additional optional information here like course ID, term, meeting days, and times as it helps students identify your course in the iClicker student app. For example, there could be multiple sections of the same course at your institution, or you might teach the same course at multiple days and times. When you're happy with the course details, click Create in the upper right-hand corner. Once you've created a course, the course name and details appear in the Active tab of your Courses list. You can create as many iClicker courses as you need, so we also recommend creating a practice course where you can familiarize yourself with iClicker before using it with your students. Once you've created your course, make sure you've downloaded the iClicker Cloud desktop software. Point your browser to iClicker.com, then click the Downloads link at the top of the page. Next click Download Options next to iClicker Cloud. You'll need to select the option that's right for the type of computer you're using. Once you click on your choice, a zipped file will download. Unzip or extract the file and save it to the destination of your choice on the computer. If you're using Windows as an operating system on your campus, you might be asked to enter a password when you try to install it on the campus computer. For this reason, we offer a version of our software that requires no permissions to install right here. Once you've downloaded and installed the iClicker Cloud desktop software, you're ready to run iClicker activities in your class. Now that you've set up your course and downloaded the desktop software, you're ready to start creating the questions you'd like to ask and add them to your lecture slides. There's no need to preload questions and answers into iClicker. As you present your lecture and come upon polling questions within your presentation, iClicker Cloud will take a picture of whatever's on your screen as you start your poll and send it to students so they can respond. iClicker Cloud floats over whatever software or content you like using, 
so you're free to use whatever lecture tools you're already working with. In this example, we'll use PowerPoint. Simply add a new slide to your lecture presentation wherever you want to ask a question. Type out the question you'd like to ask. In this example, we'll focus on our most popular question type, multiple choice. So we'll also add up to five answers, labeled A through E, for each question we'll add. In addition to multiple choice, we also have short answer, numeric, target, and multiple choice questions. Once you've written your questions, you're ready to go. Once you've completed these steps, you'll be ready to use it in your class. Here's what you'll need to do during class time. Starting class is a simple process. First, log into the iClicker Cloud desktop software. Next, start class and take attendance. Then you'll be ready to run polls, run quizzes, and then you can end the class session. I'm going to demonstrate how you can run each of these activities in your classroom. When it's time for class, begin by logging into the iClicker Cloud desktop software. Click the Start Class button. As you can see, my course menu screen has transformed to a small toolbar. I can make it even smaller by clicking on the cloud icon. The iClicker cloud software remembers where you place it. So next time I open my software, it will appear in the corner for me. Now all I need to do is open my presentation software. When you use iClicker in your course for the first time, you'll need to invite students to join your course. The process is quick and easy. Students can log in either using the iClicker student app or by visiting iClicker.com, clicking sign in, and then student. To add a class, students simply go to the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. They put in their institution, then search for the course. On class day, they simply click on the name of the course and they're ready to participate in your iClicker sessions. Once you log into the iClicker Cloud desktop software and click the Start Class button, iClicker will begin taking attendance. Here's what it looks like for your students. They simply click the Join button and now they've been successfully checked into class. They're also ready to answer any polling or quizzing questions that you have for them. Now you're ready to ask your students iClicker polling questions. When you come to a polling question in your lecture deck, simply click on the cloud icon to expand it, and then click on polling. Next, select the type of question that you are going to ask, and then when you are ready, click the play button to start the question. When I click the green button, it takes a capture of my desktop and sends it to students so they can easily see the question as they answer. Here I can see how much time has passed on the question, I can see how many responses I've gotten, and I can preview results. When I'm satisfied with how much time has passed, I can click the stop button. And then if I'd like to grade the question, I click results again. And then I simply touch where the correct answer is to mark this as the correct answer. All these other answers are incorrect. Let's see another question type. This is a short answer question type. So to ask a question, again, all I need to do is go to my drop down menu select the type of question and then click the play button 
When I click that play button, it takes a capture of my desktop and sends it to students. With a short answer, students are able to answer with up to 140 characters like a tweet. When you're satisfied with the number of responses, click Stop. Then you can click on Results. If no one's entered a correct response, you can enter something in the other area here so that students will know the correct response. Here's a numeric question. Again, to ask this type of question, all I need to do is select the type of question from the drop-down menu and click the play button and again it sends a desktop capture to my students so that they can see the question and answer easily. Let's see what it looks like for my student. You can see here my student can see the question and they can answer easily. And then when you feel enough students have responded can easily turn the poll off. The next type of question is called a target question. This is a really interesting type of question. So I'm going to go and change my type of question to a target question. And I'm going to hit the play button to ask my students this question. Here's how it works for students. Let me go ahead and show you. When students have a target question, all they need to do is touch on the image and then click send to indicate where their correct answer would be. And then as the instructor, when you're satisfied with the number of responses that you've gotten, you can go ahead and press the stop button. To grade results, click on the results button, expand the image, then draw a small box around wherever you feel the correct answer is and click Save. The last question type that iClicker features is the multiple answer question type. So with this type of questions, students are asked to select a number of correct responses. So here I just make sure that my drop down menu is correctly set to multiple answer and then I click that play button. My students get that screenshot of the question sent to them. I'm able to monitor when my responses come in. And then when I'm satisfied with the number of responses, I simply click stop. I'm not going to grade this question because I want to show you what it looks like to grade a question at the iClicker website after class is finished. You can also ask your students anonymous questions. This is great when you need to ask your students questions that may be sensitive. Simply click on the More button, select Anonymous. You'll see that your toolbar turns black. Make sure that you have it set to the correct question type and then press Play. Here's what it looks like for your students. For students, you can see that when they answer, their question quickly disappears so that even a student sitting behind them wouldn't be able to peek and see how they answered. When you're happy with the number of answers, go ahead and click the stop button. For anonymous questions, you can view the results, but you cannot grade them. And just be sure to turn off anonymous mode when you're finished with it. With iClicker Cloud Quizzing, you can replace the use of Scantrons in your class for low stake assessments. With quizzing, you distribute a set of up to 99 questions and your students use their iClicker student app accounts to answer completing the exercises at their own pace. This is an easy way to do a low stakes quiz, answer questions during a lab session, or complete a course evaluation. I have a small quiz here. To start a quiz, simply go back to the main menu, click the Start Quiz button, and let the system know how many questions you have. Then click Start. When you're ready to begin the quiz, press the Play button. You can easily keep track of how much time has passed and how many students have submitted their quizzes. Here's what it looks like for students. You can see that students do not receive screenshots of the questions that you're asking them. 
Students can go through questions in any order. And when they're done, they're asked to review their questions one more time before they submit. When you're ready, you can simply stop the quiz by clicking the red button. They'll ask if you for sure want to end it. And you can say yes. And then here you can go ahead and you can grade the results. It asks you if you're sure you want to grade the results because you might be projecting and you might have students who are still going to take it. So again, the grading process is really easy. Simply touch on the correct answer to turn it green. If you have any feedback for students, you can type it here. If you want students to see your feedback and the correct answers, make sure to click this button here. You can quickly go through the questions and grade them one at a time. And then when you're done, simply go back and all the students will have their quizzes returned to them with the grades. Lastly, you have some options when it's time to end your class session. When you go to end your class session, you'll go and X out and you'll be asked if you want to end your class with an exit poll. Here's some more information about exit polls. Exit polls are designed to gather feedback from your students after class ends. Students are sent a notification that you would like feedback and they respond in their own time. This is the feedback that they're asked to send. Later, you can download the responses from the session details window in the gradebook. Now you're ready to learn the steps you need to take with iClicker after class. After class, you'll want to head to iClicker.com to manage assignments, manage your roster, manage polling and quizzing data after class, manage attendance data, and transfer grades. Start the process by heading to iClicker.com and then signing in as an instructor. Click on the name of your course and now you're ready to go. With iClicker assignments, you can engage students with pre-authored questions as they work through their own pace. Instructors can use assignments to gather feedback, promote participation, and provide lightweight student assessment. Let me show you how. You can create an iClicker assignment question in any software as long as you can save them in PDF format. Here I'm using PowerPoint. I'm just going to save as and I'm going to make sure I save it as a PDF. Next I'm going to click the Assignments tab on the Instructor website. Then I click Create. All I need to do is give my assignment a name, specify an availability date, a due date, and then set the performance or participation points you wish to award for each question. Then upload your PDF. Click the Next button. Each page of the PDF will appear as its own question. Make sure you have the correct question type selected. And here you can enter a correct answer if one is required. When you're satisfied with your assignment, go ahead and click right here and there's your assignment ready to go. Now let's talk about how you can manage your iClicker roster. Simply click on the People tab and you can see which students are enrolled in your class. and you can see their registration information. Here you can remove a student from the class, and you can also drill down into an individual student's performance. You can also change an individual student's grades. Back in the People tab, you can also click on Instructors to add another instructor or teaching assistant to your course. Now I'm going to show you how to manage your polling and quizzing data. 
In the class history section, you can view past class sessions with each iClicker activity labeled and color coded. To view or grade a poll or quiz, simply click the activity name and click each question to grade the results. Here you can see I've left question number one ungraded, so I'm going to click on it. And now I simply touch on the correct answer to turn it green, and all the other questions will be marked incorrect. This is also the screen where I can delete activities. Simply click the delete button, and I can go through and easily delete anything I want to. I can also export all of my activities here. The instructor website is also where you will manage your attendance data. Click on the attendance tab. This is where you can see the attendance records for all the students in your course. If you ever need to update the attendance status for a student individually, simply click on the cell and change the status. Now you'll see a gray triangle in the corner of the cell that indicated you manually changed it. If for some reason you need to delete a class session altogether, simply click the session name, then click delete session. Finally, if you want to download any of this data to a spreadsheet, just click export. Then select some or all of the sessions to download. Now let's talk about managing and transferring grades. Click on the gradebook tab and you'll be able to see the overview of all the grades of all the students in your class. Here you can export your grades in various formats. In a CSV file or in any of these popular LMS formats. If GradeSync is set up for your course, this is where you'll see the Sync Grades button. You'll also be able to see which students have successfully synced to your course. You can toggle to Details and view more information about each activity by clicking on the activity name. Here you can edit the name, export any exit polls, or delete the activity. You can also update a student's score by clicking on their points for a specific activity. To set up an integration for your grades, click Settings and then click on Integrations. This screen will walk you through the integration process that is available on your campus. On my campus, I'm able to use Roster and GradeSync integrated with Canvas. This may be different for your institution. This wraps up our time together going over the iClicker Cloud website and desktop software. If you still have questions, visit the iClicker support site and consider signing up for a training if you'd like to meet personally with our support team. At iClicker Support, we have a knowledge base where you and your students can search for answers to common questions, set up resources, and troubleshooting. You and your students are also welcome to contact our support team. They can assist you via chat, email, or over the phone. Thanks for watching, and happy teaching!